Satnam, welcome to today's class. Today we continue to look at the barriers that we've created in our minds. And we're going to look at it from a very yogic perspective today, having a quick look at a very deep subject of the three gunas. So when we work with the body, we look at the different energies. We have the gross physical body. Then we have from the Ayurvedic perspective, the doshas, vata, kapha, pita, and the subtle energies of the doshas are tehas, ojas, and prana. Those are the more subtle energies. The doshas are the very physical energies, the actual physical body, muscles, bones, and so on. And then the subtle energies are just a little bit more subtle, working with the elements of fire, water, and air. And then even more refined than those subtle energies are the three gunas. And these three gunas are believed to be the building blocks of all life. It is the, the most divine energy, the most subtle form of energy that exists in absolutely everything. Whether it is sentient or non-sentient, these three gunas exist within it. And the three gunas, and you may have heard of these, are tamas rajas and sattvas. It's a very, very brief overview. Tamas is a very heavy kind of energy linked to inertia, inactivity, a dullness, and a lethargy. And an emotion that might be associated with tamas is shame or guilt, for example. When we look at tamas from a mind point of view, somebody who is very strong in tamas may be prone to something like depression. So that tamasic energy is a stuck energy. We find it very difficult to move forwards. And of course, we see this in people that are depressed. It's a very hopeless sort of energy. I don't know how I'm going to get out of where I am. That's the tamasic energy. Then we have the rajasic energy. And tamasic energy is associated with um, the elements of water. Then the rajasic energy is much more... Um, forward moving. So it's a much stronger energy. It's associated with the element of fire. It's an energy of transformation. When we are rajasic, we have lots of passion. There's lots of activity. We're very much an ego and individuating. So it's all about me. Who am I in the world? How do I live in the world? How does this affect me? Very much about the self. And in this um, Rajasic state, we may be prone to anxiety or stress. So we see that, and I think most of us in contemporary life are in a Rajasic state because we have so much to do and we're constantly on the go, moving, moving, doing this, doing that. Very little time for contemplation and awareness when we're in this Rajasic state. I know personally for me, I'm very often in a Rajasic state. And what can happen is we get those feelings of anxiety. We feel very stressed. We feel like there's so much going on. But the biggest issue, the biggest barrier we have with the Rajasic state is the inability to be completely content with where we are. So where the Tamas energy is stuck and non-moving, it's that inertia, the Rajasic energy is constantly on the move. So it's never quite happy with where it is. It's always looking to the next thing. I'll be happy when, I'll be satisfied when. It's very much a um, materialistic state that we're in, which is a sign of how we live in a, in a capitalist society. We are very materialist. We have to think about our homes and our cars and food in the belly. And it's all about maintaining the lifestyle keeping up with the Joneses, and that's the Rajasic state, a real sense of restlessness. And then the Sattvic state is the ultimate human state. It's the state of balance, harmony, goodness, openness, creativity, and joy. And this Sattvic state is what we all think we need to try and attain. But really, Sattvic is our natural state. It's how we always are. And much like Rumi says, it's not to, your task is not to seek for love, but to remove the barriers that you have created to keep love away from you. The sattvic state is very much that idea of Rumi's love. It is who we are. So we don't need to strive for sattva. What we have to do simply 
is observe, am I more tamasic or am I more rajasic? And how can I bring that tamas and rajas into balance so that I can be in my true state, which is sattvic? And that's a really comforting thought for me to think that sattva isn't something that I have to attain. It's what I am. It's my natural state. And all I have to do is soften the rajas and the tamas. Now, we, if we listen to this, we think, oh, okay, it's rajas and tamas are bad and sattva is good. But of course, that's not the way that it is. Tamas, we go, we move through. It's a beautiful dance of the gunas that we move through all during our lives. When we go to sleep at night, we're in a tamasic state. And that sleep is healing and it's, it's profoundly beautiful. So that tamasic state is something that we need. If we didn't have some element of rajas within our being, then we wouldn't be able to move forward. We wouldn't be able to achieve the things that we look forward to. We would be completely stuck. To be in a completely sattvic state all the time is to be a monk sitting in a cave on a mountain, not even a monk in a um, uh, ashram. It would be a monk on a mountain because even in the ashram, you're going to need tamas and you're going to need rajas in order to get through the activities of the day. So we're not striving for absolute sattva. What we're striving for is a beautiful balance where sattvic state is where we mostly are and drawing on that powerful energy of rajas to move forward and that beautiful, gentle, slowing energy of tamas to slow down and understanding what we need and when we need it. So today's class, we're going to be really working to balance the tamas and the rajas. We're going to be doing quite a strong class, so really listen to your body. If you feel that the rajas is too strong, slow down, stop, pause. Or if you feel that actually I can go a little bit harder, move your speed up and bring more rajas into your movements. And then we're going to find at the end how we come into that beautiful sattvic state where there is no ego, where we experience ourselves as we are in the pure sattvic nature. So you can bring your hands together now and come to your heart center. Lengthen your spine, tuck your tailbone under, soften your shoulders, relax your jaw, relax your tongue, and take a long deep inhalation and exhale. Inhale and exhale. And let's inhale to begin. Om Namo Guru Feel that vibration about the primal wisdom, about the teacher within me, that part of me that is all knowing. Feel that energy flowing and exhale, release. Beautiful. Bring your hands to your knees and let's start with some spinal flexes, inhaling up and exhaling down, keeping the shoulders relaxed. Neck in line with the spine. Keep 
keep your breath quite strong in rhythm with your movement so that you can just feel this connection between the breath and the body. And come to center and let's go into a Sufi grind. Continuing to warm up the spine, massage the internal organs. And feel the freedom of this movement, allowing your body to lead you. Remember, every time we do this movement, it should feel and look slightly different if we're allowing the body to lead. And change direction. Just tapping into that innate wisdom of the body. And that bodily wisdom, that innate bodily wisdom, is a sattvic wisdom. When it is without judgment or expectation, without ego. I should look this way, I should look that way, is rajasic. And back to center, drop your chin to your chest, and move into neck rolls. Again, keeping the shoulders relaxed and allowing the body to lead. See what you can hear in this movement. Feel what you can feel in your shoulders, your neck, your chest. and change direction. Keep the jaw soft, no tension in the jaw, the tongue. and come back up to center. Then you can open out your legs, just take them as wide apart as you can get them, roll forwards onto your sitting bones, inhale at the center, exhale, reaching chin to toes, spine lovely and straight, inhaling up, exhale. Each exhalation, observe yourself coming 1% closer towards your thighs. Inhale up, turn to the right. And exhale, soften. And as always in the forward bend, we surrender. So relax your elbows, relax your wrists, fingers, neck, shoulders. Check in with your face. Notice if there's any tension in your face and just soften that tension. And then keep your chest low and walk your hands across the center and over to the left. And again, just surrender here to the left. Neck, shoulders, elbows, wrists, face, jaw, tongue, completely softening, deeply relaxing. And keeping the chest low, coming over to center, relaxing on your elbows or making fists with your hands, resting your forehead on your fists, or of course, just softening all the way down. Completely releasing and surrendering, breathing into it, being completely present to every single sensation as your chest relaxes downwards 
Remember, no judgment, no expectation, just be in this forward bend. Curling up, draw your legs together, shake them out, and then come onto hands and knees, hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips, and we're moving through cat and cow. So inhaling, drop your belly down, look up, and exhaling, curling your head up. Beautiful. That's it, keep going. Just listening to the rhythm that your body is calling for. Maybe you go faster, maybe you go slower. Trusting that wisdom of the body. And come to neutral. And then tuck your toes under. Straighten your legs. Press your heels down to the mat. Lift your tailbone up. And you want to stay active in this pose. So keep pressing your chest towards your thighs. Relaxing your head, your neck. Feel the weight evenly spread between your palms and your fingers. And then start walking it out, lifting and lowering your heels. Come back to neutral. and walk your feet towards your hands. Grab hold of your elbows, drop your head and neck, lift your tailbone. You may want to soften your knees here a little bit, that's fine, just allow the surrender of the upper body. And then release your arms gently curling up and come to Tadasana. Big toes touch, ankles touch, tailbone tucks under, belly lightly engaged, shoulders relax. Feel your spine lifting, breathe into it, notice the sensations in your body. So we're going to start today, hands on the hips, and we're going to inhale, raise the leg up, exhale down, inhale opposite, and exhale down. Moving again at your own rhythm and pace, and let's go. Beautiful. Nice, strong breathing. Make sure your spine stays lovely and straight. And you're going to keep your Uddiyana lock, your belly strongly pulled in towards your spine to protect your lower back. Don't forget to breathe. And now we feel this movement. It's quite a rajasic movement. You can feel the energy at the heart center. Feel the heat building up in the body. Doing really, really well. Listen to your body. Slow down if you need to. Try and keep moving, even if the movement becomes really slow. Just keep it going. Trust that your body knows what you need. And remember, we always go to that point of feeling gentle discomfort, but never pain. 
and you're the only person that knows the difference between discomfort and pain in your body. And release, come to Tadasana. Deep breath in. Hold your breath, squeeze mole band, lift the pelvic floor, lift the anal muscles. As you hold the breath, circulate the energy through your body. Take more breath in. And exhale. Come to stillness. Notice the sensations in your body. Bringing ourselves into that stillness. Without judgment or ego, the sattvic state. Beautiful. Good, so we're going to remain standing. And the next exercise, we're going to bend the right knee, interlink your hands underneath the right thigh, straighten your spine, and then you can either stay here, or if it feels possible, extending that right leg and just holding it extended. And let's go. Raise the right knee, interlink your hands underneath your thigh, find a focal point, so for me, I like to watch something on the floor. And in this drishti point, this focal point, put all of your attention, all of your awareness. So you're completely focused on that one point. Don't forget to breathe. Keep your breathing conscious. Beautiful, conscious breaths. Inhaling and exhaling. Notice where your mind is going. Do you have any barriers for balancing or flexibility? And if they are, become curious about them. And release, changing sides, bringing your weight into your right leg. Lift your left knee up. Once again, focus on your drishti point and extend and hold it there. And again, notice the fire in your body. This is a rajasic movement, even though it's still. You feel the heart rate increasing. We have to stay completely conscious to the breath completely focused on that one point, your drishti point. Stay with your breathing. Keep your spine lovely and straight. Just 10 more seconds. And bend the knee, come back to Tadasana. Deep breath in. Feel the heat in the body. Notice the sensations in the body. Feel those subtle energies moving. Take more breath in, hold it. And exhale. Come to stillness. There's a tremendous heat that builds up in the body. Notice where that heat feels strongest and see if you can put your awareness there. Invite some curiosity into this heat in the body. We feel the space between postures is so sattvic in its nature, the polarity of the movement to the stillness. 
Beautiful. Now we're going to take the legs slightly wider than hip distance apart. And this next exercise is really, really good for um, well, all children, but particularly children that have um, ADHD issues and also older people with Alzheimer's. So obviously it's a brain exercise. So we're going to grab hold of the left earlobe with the right hand and the right earlobe with the left hand. And the movement is inhale at the top and exhale, squat all the way down and inhale up. Now we're only doing this for one minute. So it's a really, really short time. So you can put all of your energy into it and let's go. Beautiful squatting all the way down as you exhale, inhaling up and use your breath to really carry the movements. That's it. Beautiful. Lovely, strong breathing, squatting as deeply down as you can. Keep that pressure on the earlobes. Stay with your breath. Last 15 seconds. Last one, come up to standing and inhale. Hold the breath in and you may notice a little lightheadedness. Feel the movement of the energy in the body. Take more breath in. And exhale. And use the space between to regulate your breath. Inhaling for three. Exhaling for three. Notice where your thoughts are going. Remember, we have to identify and acknowledge the barriers in the body, in the mind, before we can move through them. Beautiful. So the next exercise, we're going to remain standing, feet slightly wider than hip distance apart, and the movement is crossing over opposite arm and leg. Very simple. And let's go. So we're working now with the subtle energy of Ojas. And the subtle energy works with our emotions. And also the fluids in the body. So this movement of the arms above the head is just so wonderful for the lymphatic system. Removing the toxins from the body. But also the toxic thoughts, the toxic beliefs. So you can just invite any toxic thoughts or beliefs that you may have to gently rise up into your awareness. Notice them with curiosity. Maybe some are familiar. Maybe something pops up that you haven't seen before or in a long time. Notice what's happening with your breath. Is it going into natural rhythm with your movements? Beautiful. Keep going. <laughs> We're really starting to feel the heat in the body. And it feels so good to move the body in this way. Inviting 
whatever needs to go, whatever's ready to let go, to gently rise up to the surface. And come to center. And we're just going to stand here and breathe into this right now. Feel the shoulders. Notice what we've been carrying on the shoulders. Notice any other parts of your body that are calling for your awareness. And just gently allow your awareness to go there. Beautiful. And so of course we're going to remain standing. <laughs> The next exercise is really so wonderful for letting go of what you've been holding on to. So in the previous exercises, we've invited any negative or toxic thoughts that we may have had. And in this next exercise, we're going to smash them out, give them a physical release. So any of those barriers that you've noticed, now is the time to let them go. And if nothing has come up, just trust that your body knows exactly what to release. So we're going to inhale, reach back, make sure the belly is strongly engaged to protect the lower back. And we're going to exhale and hit the floor really hard, really loud. Inhale, reach up, arch back, and exhale, hit the floor. Now when you hit the floor, you're going to feel the kind of jolt, a shock running through your arms. That's how powerful this is. It's not just a light touch, it's a hitting down and with each hit releasing inviting that surrender and let's go inhale arch back exhale down and really just trust that your body knows what to let go of Hitting the floor strongly, powerfully, releasing. We get so few opportunities in our life to actually hit something, to let that force out of the body. And it's such a powerful action to really allow it now. For that guy that cut you off in traffic, when you held your tongue with your mother-in-law, Whatever it is that you want to just let go, that you've been holding on to, now is the time to smash it out. You're doing really well. Keep going. We don't have much time left here, so really invite everything that wants to be smashed out to come out now. Every time you held your tongue, every time you wanted to smash something but you couldn't, now's the time. Let it out. It's a safe place to release and let go. Ten more seconds. Everything you've got, let them out. Beautiful, come back up to standing. And I want you to take a really long, deep inhalation now. Hold your breath in, lift more bund, pelvic floor, the anal muscles active, and visualize that prana circulating through your body. Notice what's left, what residual thoughts are there about yourself, about your body, about your work, 
about your family. Take more breath in and exhale. Come into that space of stillness, the sattvic awareness without the ego. Just experiencing yourself as you are in this moment without judgment. Notice the thoughts and just allow them to move gently past. What a gift this awareness is. Beautiful. Now we're going to come into archer pose. So we're going to take the feet about leg distance apart. Now most people think they have really short legs. So you probably need to go a little bit wider than your first instinct. Then we're going to turn the right foot to face the right. Notice how the hips follow. So just bring the hips back to front. And then drop the right knee that your right knee is over your right ankle. With your shoulders facing squarely forward, bring your right thumb into your palm, fingers wrapped around it, and your right fist, sorry, your left fist at your left shoulder. And then your right arm comes up and you curl the fingers in and lift the thumb up. So the thumb is pointing upwards, shoulders face forwards, and then turn your gaze onto that right thumb and we're just going to hold there with long deep breathing make sure your shoulders are relaxed your elbows elevated feel strong through your back leg your left leg tuck your tailbone under and engage your belly soften your jaw relax your tongue Breathing into it. Five more seconds. And back to center, changing sides. Right foot face forward. Left foot turns out, bending the left knee. Make sure the body is facing squarely forwards. Right fist in at the right shoulder, left arm up, left thumb pointing up and gazing over that left thumb. Archer pose, so we're feeling very tight, very strong. It's not a relaxed pose, it's taut. You can imagine that string pulled back from the bow. Everything is taut, ready to be released. Hold it, breathing into it. Sink down even lower, stay strong. That's it, good. And coming back up to center, walk your feet together. Deep breath in. Hold the breath. Visualize the breath as a beautiful healing white light. Take more breath in, hold it. And exhale. Feel what you're feeling. There's immense heat in the body. Beautiful. Now we're going to drop the chin in towards the throat, curl the spine, and just roll gently down and just allow your body to hang here. Long deep breathing. And keep your knees slightly softened, lifting your tailbone up. Feel 
feel the body slowing down. Be completely surrendered in this pose. The weight can shift onto the balls of the feet as the tailbone lifts up. And notice what happens in your mind when you just curl in on yourself like this. Is there a softness and a gentleness? Or does it become quite violent in your head? Just notice what's happening as you soften into this space. If there is a violence, thoughts of shame, guilt, anger, regret, become curious about them. See if you can observe any negative thoughts without judgment, just noticing them with that curiosity. And maybe as you notice them, they become gentler, more compassionate. And soften your knees, gently curl up, come up to standing, take a long, deep inhalation. Squeezing your bend. Hold the breath in, circulate the energy. Take more breath in. And exhale. And just be here. Be all here. Beautiful. And you can step to the back of your mat. And we're going to come into a warrior variation. So we're going to need some balance. So whenever we come into balance, we need a drishti point. So again, I like to focus on something on the floor. But if it's easier for you to gaze at eye level, that's absolutely fine. Take all of your awareness onto one single point. A mark on the floor or a wall, whatever feels comfortable, and then shift your weight onto your left foot. Bring all of your weight onto your left foot, activate your hands and fingers, point them forward, stretching the fingers, and staying focused on that point, we're going to raise the right leg and hold with long deep breathing. Now we're not going to hold for very long, and if you do come out of the pose, that's absolutely fine. Take a moment and come back in. So let's go. Stepping forwards onto left leg. Find your drishti point and raise your right leg up. Point your toes, keep your fingers active. Stay completely focused. You want to keep the belly strong and engaged. And bend your standing leg and step back. Notice your heartbeat. Notice your breath. And step forwards onto your right foot. Bring all of your weight onto your right leg. Activate your hands and fingers. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. Raise your left leg. Stay completely focused on that one point. Breathing into it. Toes are pointed, fingers are extended. Don't forget to breathe. And bend your standing leg. And step back. Take a deep breath in. 
squeeze more bend, lift the pelvic floor, the anal muscles, hold the breath. And exhale, release. I just want you to be here in this experience. Notice the heat that we generated in the body. Notice what thoughts came up in the mind, what barriers you've created for yourself. Remember the words of John Milton, the mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven out of hell and a hell out of heaven. Beautiful. Come up on your toes, bring your palms together. Drop down and we're just going to pause here for a moment. And then drop your knees to the mat. Sit back on your heels, bring your hands to your feet, and soften down. And as you surrender to child's pose, with your hips resting on your heels and your forehead resting on the mat, just allow yourself to notice what you have experienced through this class. Notice how you've danced between the three gunas, the tamasic, rajasic, and sattvic. Feel where you are now. And very gently curling up. And you can remain on your knees or come to a cross legged meditative posture, whatever feels more comfortable for you. And we're going to bring the tips of the fingers together, fingertips lightly touching, with the palms pulled away in a pyramid shape. And we're going to drop the elbows. The breath, we're going to inhale for five, hold for five, and exhale for five. I'll count the first few rounds and then you can continue on your own. And let's begin. Inhale, two, three, four, five, and hold, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, Five. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Hold, two, three, four, five. And exhale, two, three, four, five. And you can just continue on your own. Counting the inhale, the hold, and the exhale. And just notice how counting the breath quiets the mind. It brings us beyond our consciousness. And into a higher consciousness. Manage Uttaya Jagajit. Conquer the mind, conquer the world. Stay with your breath.
and take a long deep inhalation. Squeeze more band, lift the pelvic floor, lift the anal muscles, hold the breath in. Take more breath in. And exhale. Coming into stillness. And when you're ready, making the transition down onto your mat for the final relaxation. Coming to Shavasana or any other comfortable relaxation posture. You may want to cover yourself with a blanket. It's really allowing yourself to be as comfortable as you can be. And you can give yourself permission to relax fully and completely. Knowing that it is here in the space of deep relaxation, that you are healed. I relax my feet. I relax my feet. My feet. Are relaxed. I relax. Calves and thighs. I relax. Calves and thighs. Calves and thighs. Oh, relax. I relax hips and buttocks abdomen and chest. I relax hips and buttocks, abdomen and chest. Hips and buttocks, abdomen and chest. Relax. I relax hands and arms, neck and shoulders. I relax hands and arms, neck and shoulders. Hands and arms, neck and shoulders. Relax. I 
I relax face. Eye, nose, mouth, and tongue. Face is relaxed. I relax jaw and skull. I relax jaw and skull. Jaw and skull. Relax. I relax my spine. I relax my spine. My spine is relaxed. I relax all the bones in my body. I relax all the bones in my body, all the bones in my body, relax, and I relax my entire body. I relax my entire body. My entire body is completely relaxed. Filled with peace. And there is peace within me. Peace around me. Peace in all of the world. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Start to bring your awareness to the rise and fall of your chest. Very gently. Rubbing your thumb across your fingertips, moving your toes, and you can take your arms above your head, have a beautiful stretch. Now hug your knees to your chest, drop your knees to the right as you look over your left shoulder. And changing sides. And coming back to center, rubbing the soles of your feet and the palms of your hands together. And rocking up, coming to Sukhasana to easy pose. And bring your hands to your heart center. May the long time sun shine upon us. All love surround us.
and the pure light within guide our way on. So Satnam, may you have a very, very beautiful day.